Indie Comic Union presents Quilt. A collaboration between the comic makers of the Union, an original story set upon the dying patchwork world of the Quilt. Join us on the adventure, not just in the comic, but in the making of it, on YouTube, Instagram, and at IndieComicUnion.com. Welcome back for another behind-the-scenes project video on our collaborative comic, The Quilt. This time we're working on Space Barbarians. We're going to have a draw jam with Matt Draws D&D, John Osborne Art, Jink Beast, and myself, the Seahorsey, as we go over some ideas for these crazy space barbarians that are going to pull together a lot of the narrative of our new comic, The Quilt. It's, it's inspired uh, from Matt's interpretation of the script. Like, I love the way you did that. That was really cool. Oh, so this cool. is like, that's what I love about this. It's filtered through all these different artists and you get this like condensed you know mm. cool result totally yeah. hey matt uh, i will bring your photo your your picture in that you did of the landscape do you want to talk about it at all right now oh you know, sure to edit that in um yeah when i first started drawing i kind of first thing i did was like some like um radio tower kind of thing like that and then um I just kind of had a lot of fun, like just having these buildings that are sort of at a weird sort of slant angle and a lot of like an egg thing. And oh, yeah. this is this is just like a lamp. And <laughs> and then there's a building at, where I grew up in Madison um, uh, that's that's called Paris Squared. And it's just like a round building. Um, and I thought that was I just put that in there. Right. Um, anyway, yeah, this, I just had a lot of fun. I whenever I draw, I always like to do it. Um, put the characters in some setting. It just makes it the story come alive for me. It's just really fun. Oh yeah, I, I, uh, I it, the way you're talking about it, pulling things like the lamp in there, it makes me think of when they were very first, you know, making Star Wars. They would just pull, you know, hunks of, of kit bash and the hunks of plastic or transistors and things, and and just incorporate that into their models, into their world building. <laughs> Your totally. lamp is like that too. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, I think they call it kibble is the term for it that yeah. I, I just like an assortment of different things. <laughs> um, but then lo looking at yours, um, John, that is, it's super cool. And I see the riff there too. Let's jump over to John's. Can you turn your screen share back? Oh, thank on, you. John? Yeah. I love that. Uh, I, I still want to add that giant radar dish. I love that. Um, it looked like you had like a Coliseum. Yeah. Um, it, with you know this radar tower, and I just the the juxtaposition of the, that Colosseum, that ancient you know depleted Roman uh, architecture with the, the radar, like that, like that's the perfect cross section of like this character and the uh, the culture that she lives in. Right, space barbarian stuff. Totally. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I don't know if we've got a final design for the. Uh, or a design going for the dark star thing. So I just, that's a placeholder, what I've got open. Or is that what we're calling it? Do we have a name for that? I think it was the, yeah, there's, well, there's the dark star, the hazel dwarf, because they're caught in between. And then the mm -hmm. gods get bored of their whole wicked game that they're pulling on. And they um, unleash then the, the tear uh, or that fractaling thing. And, and actually one of the people we talked to about that whole design stage, uh, Jink Beast, you're here. Yes, you know, I've, um, I've been doing a little bit of work of, on that <laughs> oh, <very laughs> uh, right oh, before nice. this, so I can share it with you guys. But you, oh you guys wow, see that? That is, you just like nailed it right there. It yeah, goes at, at that level of abstraction. You know, it was like oh yeah, I just try to put like different patterns of like different geology oh, or something. Oh yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> uh, that is so good. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it was fun to it was fun to make. It was pretty fu uh, relaxing, kind of like a mandala thing. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just thinking about all the cool like creatures and and sort of animals and things that live in the different areas. Yeah, yeah it would there's be. There's so much potential for that. Yeah. Yeah, the idea of um, the patch, like the patch uh, planet, yeah. so good because it gives you so many possibilities. Of like different civilizations and different uh, landscapes. Yeah, it's like a map because I look at it and I yeah. go, "What could be going on right there? And where would these people be?" You know, like, like in my mind, the the crater is probably somewhere over on the left where that orange hilly kind of landscape is. You know, 
it's mm -hmm. cool to, to try and figure that out what's what what's going on i could picture a scene where there's like maybe not even main characters but a couple of characters sitting at the edge of their biome mm -hmm. and sort of just looking over the over the edge and trying to decide you know are we gonna go over there or what's going you know just having a little conversation or something uh -huh. <laughs> yeah all right so if, when john shows back up we'll have to hide the picture really quick and not let him see it <laughs> <laughs> hey john okay sorry about that sweet hey. all right. hi all right now we're gonna hide this really quick not let john see it <laughs> Wait, I can already see it. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't even consider the differences in like atmospheres oh, that yeah. it could have. Man, that is awesome. Well done. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. I, I knew, I knew <laughs> we had the right person picked for that. We knew it like immediately, like who can we pick? And then we could barely get that sentence out before we knew exactly. Yeah. And I like to think we are 100% right. Our instinct was... 100 uh, yeah, yeah. right <laughs> oh damn uh, and, and the level at which you play with abstraction is so convenient too because it becomes like a map that becomes this this representational thing um where we can insert so many more stories than if it had been done in a a, a realistic geographic style you know where it was really mm -hmm. yeah dense and high. yeah and it has a b-side too that is yeah, not oh made. yeah <laughs> all the unknown stuff <laughs> yeah. like, what's there oh right yeah, I love all the textures, and it just makes me wonder, like, what, what societies, what type of characters could live on each of these different planes? It's yeah. very cool. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, Glad and, you guys like it. <laughs> and you got like the like the beehive kind of area, and yeah. totally like coral and water, and I mean, the sky's the limit with the imagination looking at this. And these were buildups to the character, and tar over there to the left. This is playing with different character names. Um, but this is one of the first designs of the character. Thunk hasn't changed much in far, as far as my design. I don't know what's happened since. Um, but my design is more of a placeholder anyway. We had some cool conversations yesterday. And this I'll was get those where places. I got the... Yeah, I can't wait to hear those and what, went, uh, what was figured out in those. And then this was the design where I decided that, you know, the shields would be an important part of uh, their culture and they could use them to enter atmospheres and stuff like that. So the majority have them, um, but I'd say, you know, there's some that don't, some do, you know. That, that's such a cool detail. And I really, I look forward to the scene where that happens. I know, I'm like, we got to build them back up to where she can do that. You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or maybe, it, or maybe it gets used because it's, it's strong enough to do such a thing maybe there's a there's a moment in time where there's like a really bad blast of whatever and you know it can be used in that one moment but maybe it like breaks it or something that's really cool oh, i like yeah. that like because it's supposed to be able to take intense heat you know from re-entry so any anything else that produces flame or heat it would you know still work as intended <laughs> yeah so that'd be that's a good idea I think there's a there's a way to rewrite that ending of issue one um, when they're standing there and Thunk falls and the bruise black rises up as this big tide wall uh, over them and the uh, tar and sliver are at the sides of Thunk and Thunk is gone. Um, she could come in with her shield and uh, kind of split it as it crashes over her and then mm -hmm. pick up Thunk. We could see if that fits. Um, she could even shatter her shield, saving them and then kind of sacrifices and replaces her shield with um, the body of Thunk who becomes this you know mystical weapon and key that's cool i like i that. love it i love that <laughs> kind of stuff like that. yeah where there's like a really special magic item a really special something and it has to be sacrificed and it's oh, just yeah. really meaningful <laughs> it's sad trades are so important in fantasy right you have you can't yeah. just have it all you have to have this one thing turn into or transform into something else otherwise yeah you get uh, into that superman sy syndrome where everything is possible and it, it kind of um uh, erodes the fantasy yeah yeah, yeah it, it makes them true. less vulnerable yeah and then and then when you're reading it you're like also like oh i really hope she gets a new shield i wonder if she will you know in the next mm -hmm. story or yeah you're and, just waiting for that moment where she spots that right and picks yeah a new one up or something yeah 
And it's good yeah. for action figures too, because now they're going to have to get the one that has the second shield, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> Here's, uh, cool. I did this this morning because I just wanted to have something to bring into the draw jam that we're about to commence with and and say we wanted the Starbreakers to have an aesthetic that we allowed John to kind of kick off in a really awesome way. But we wanted to have um, a window open to all kinds of different styles and diversities within what that culture actually was so that um, there could be lots of uh, voices having input in it. And so I tried to, to drag it in a more fantastical direction and go, the races involved in the Starbreakers don't have to just be humanoid. Mm -hmm. Oh, and, cool. And so I tried to stretch it that way. And I tried to show decline by showing them making do. Um, if we had a theme of broken weapons in the two scenes in which we get to see them when they're still around um, and tattered <laughs> war gear that they're trying to hang on to. Uh, that was really good, man. That says yeah. a lot about the culture. Like they're, they'll, they're hanging on to it, but they don't have the wherewithal or, or information to repair it you know yeah, yeah it's running out of supplies yeah. and mm -hmm. i tried to diversify the, the heat or the heat shield idea too and gave that kind of triangular old-fashioned america shield mm -hmm. uh to this character which i came up with igo who was the name i came up for this one doesn't have to be such i don't think they get named in our script but the big thing that we have to make them function for our two scenes in the first issue and beyond that we don't know anything about them so it's all just stuff we're going to put in the wiki and have fun with and imagine but the things we do need to know is that they're this 70s culture in decline they have these shields um, and they have a kind of diverse look to them and i'll jump over to my next drawing here i like i like how you're um just widening it here it's really fun mm -hmm. yeah and so this yeah. is breadth of, of uh, so cool you who are present here um, as a group, so us as a group, we can we have some room to wiggle and go some places. And other members of the union and other people that want to contribute to this, um, feel free to do some sketches, submit them. We'll work yeah. them into the wiki. Um, so even if you weren't here for this draw jam, you can still participate uh, by coming in strong with some other images that um, further stretch out what the barbarians can be, what the starbreakers can be, and we'll move that in as, um, and that'll be part of the. Uh, the documentation in the wiki and uh, something that people who draw the panels with star breakers in them have at their disposal. So mm -hmm. that's it. On the left, I have a couple different shield designs to, to, that I scribbled out to kind of diversify what the shields could even look like. Um, Very cool. All those storm shields. And again, I had that broken like laser lance on that one character. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They'd just be hanging on to whatever gear they could acquire, you know? And uh, I like, I like that. Um, the hairdo or the head shape of, of the one on the left. Me oh, too. Yeah, yeah me too. A little too. bit of kind of things would be, would be good stuff to bring in and bird-like characters. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's it, awesome. It's kind of like, um, kind of like the Green Lanterns, a, a kind of universal protectorate that uh, you yeah. know, a, a union of people by common uh, creed rather than necessarily being of one race to be the Starbreakers. So. Yeah, I mean, especially after landing on that planet, now it's like, I mean, overrun with all different types of you know, species and there's sort of is there sort of like that kind of proud nobility or kind of the heritage or um like they're proud of something they don't remember why they're proud of it oh, that's you a know good yeah like it's lost yeah. but they know and are they proud. Are, are they barbarians from the outside or are they barbarians from the inside like do do they kind of think of themselves as barbarians or is that more what everyone else oh those are the barbarians i always thought that when we referred to referred to barbarian we were referring to like the state of their okay stuff yeah, I, and i could be wrong i could be way I off agree, i totally 100 percent agree with that i thought of them as this like space knights that are in decline and that's okay what mm -hmm. they were in, then they're trying to be the good guys and failing at it because there's so much adversity yeah um, and that's actually a good segue to the point of I tried to do young looking characters because mm -hmm. the scene that we really get to interact with the Starbreakers. So when we're designing, we want to address this um, about the middle of that issue that we uh, that John and I put out. They are hiding in this kind of Buck Rogers looking land that's going to show that they've had to move on because the blue, bruise black is hunting them. And mm -hmm. uh, some young characters are, and some elderly characters can be surrounding Apennon in the ruins as they're clearly like, you know, hiding behind rocks kind of things. And the, the 
people are kind of talking to her and she's saying not yet like they're planning an ambush to strike back and not yet and yet the bruise black surprises them and comes down upon them giving us the feeling that Apennon fails and loses all of her people before we meet her again at the end of the script mm. so mm -hmm. by creating characters that we can lose characters that are young and vulnerable characters that are older and still mm -hmm. trying to be strong we'll create a lot of emotional appeal just in those two pages of that scene by yeah. the kind of characters we create so it's something to be mindful of when you're um doing your character designs try to get that uh uh some kind of either past your prime or not quite in your prime um, besides Apennon, who's kind of the alpha character that we were going with, so it's a good, really good way of putting it. It, it creates it creates narrative because we only have a few pages to address all these different little things happening, and just those visual details will allow the artists to be writers of that story and emotionally. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. well, uh, should we jump into doing just some some drawing? Sure. See where we can we can spend the rest of our time. I don't think I can see what you guys are drawing if you're drawing anything. I'm not I'm, doing anything yet. I'm not okay. Doing anything okay. Yet, I'm getting going. I was like, I see these these things moving. I'm like, but nothing's <laughs> happening. What's going on over here? <laughs> I just don't know how to start. I mean, like, yeah, yeah. you got to break the ice. isn't it, to just get uh, thrown into this stuff? Yeah, I still don't know what I'm drawing here. Like, I'm just just kind of let it, uh, you know. Let it go. <laughs> Let it go. Totally. When I think about it too much, I screw up. Yeah. Yeah. I always try to feel like I'm a kid. That it helps. When I start getting serious or worried, then it's not. And I remember this is just fun. Exactly. I actually have a sticker I, I made a, out of tape and I put under my monitor that looks at me all the time and it just says, have fun. Like to try and remember to have fun doing it. That's uh -huh. Yeah. That, That's that so funny just made that. me draw a little faster now because it's in a good way. Like, oh yeah, this is, I don't need to be careful for anything. Yeah, this is a judgment-free zone. All right, okay. I'm going to draw some weird <laughs> stuff in here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I... I don't know if you were on, but I'm working on it. John, I got a scene sort of where she's she's playing like a flute to the critters. Oh, and nice. I, Very it's just, hard. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like a little bonding little, just like probably what it is, is I'm just trying to make them friends in my head. Yeah. And I like to see that. It just helps me see it. Let's see if I can spotlight that for a second and see. Does that change the view in Zoom for you guys? How cool. Uh, yes. Yeah. That's just to get a little bit of a close up. Oh, I'm so bold. <laughs> uh, there should be an ability to change your brush size in the. Uh, yes, option. there is. I just didn't watch what I was making in comparison <laughs> with you guys. <laughs> That's what this is about. Uh, it's gonna be like cross pollination with art. It's gonna be cool. Let's see what everything comes out looking like. Totally. I don't see yours, John. You? Oh, you're on, Oh, you're. All, you guys are all in the jam. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We're all got it. The, the magma. Yep. No, I totally see it. <laughs> I was looking at the small, um, the small ones. Yeah, I was using my camera, I think the last time, or my phone last time we did this, but there's just no way it was going to have enough juice. <laughs> so. I realize I, I did a couple ideas this morning, but I'm going kind of cold on this one and it's just, uh, <laughs> I'm not feeling it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Maybe we need to watch before we do these. We need to watch a motivational, like a like a, like a thirty minute, or thirty second motivational video on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like I realized as we're doing this that the first half of what we've been recording was really the part that needs to be there ahead of the draw jam because it gives um, like style notes would allow people that didn't necessarily want to be on the videos to submit some things that we could just talk about and mm -hmm. it'd be more asynchronous. Uh, and so it's almost like we need to have the, the draw jam uh, days later as an aggregate after we did uh, what we just went through. <laughs> well, it probably seemed like it took a lot longer because of my consistent internet dropouts. Well, I, I just meant because it gives everybody a chance to um, collect their ideas and- I see. Game. Yeah, I, I feel like I used all my good ideas this morning and now I'm just kind of scrawling. <laughs> you know, I think sometimes some of the best stuff comes out of that when you just force yourself to draw yeah. anyway. Yeah, totally. Sometimes it doesn't work out, but I've, you know, <laughs> some, for the most part. Yeah, I just feel more pressure when it's something collective. Like I usually just do whatever I want. <laughs> oh yeah I hear you it's a whole different animal doing it I was uh, more I actually had that more on the um, first time with the team up that kind of oh thing. yeah also I just like enjoying watching everybody sorry oh it was so much fun yeah, yeah. so on, on that note we need to get together a couple times and do some um draw jams that allow us to make headers for the new website. Um, I took yeah. I, I took some things from the Indie Comic team up and put them up there right now. But I know that um, even if we don't draw it in Magma together, we can uh, collage together a bunch of little iconic images from all of our wonderful members and put that up to represent all of our skills. Sounds like a good idea. Yeah, and it is fun to get together and do all this. Um, yeah, we still have to do a drink and draw sometime. Yeah. <laughs> Not anyone has to drink, but you know, yeah. just a I can drink free form. Drunk. If I drink, I drink. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's when you get the really interesting uh, No, but I think that art. whether or not it's <laughs> whether or not it's like drinking it the idea of just sort of like yeah more yeah. of just draw whatever <laughs> i see what you're saying oh yeah i think i just call them that is what i'm used to just drawing with a bunch of people i assume mm -hmm. draw. it's lost meaning in terms of <laughs> what it actually means maybe some orange juice or something <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think I'll, I might be drinking. I don't know about everyone else, but. <laughs> I like these characters. That's, yeah. that, that happens right away. And once you start yeah. drawing oh my God. character. You guys are doing so good. <laughs> I love them. Man, I like the uh, like samurai uh, helmet. It looks like like type of because uh, I like how they're all all the helmets kind of just like of warriors of Earth past. There's not one, you know. There's kind of sci-fi versions of these ancient helmets. I like it. Yeah. I really like um, I like her flag. I really like what you're doing, man. That's cool. That's so cool that we can do it both analog and digital. Yeah, I can see there's a little bit of technical challenges, but I'm really excited to solve it and figure out the perfect system. Oh right, yeah, right before they change the software and uh, and and dial <laughs> us in because I really do like that we can accommodate everything and uh, on that. Definitely. Yeah, I might try the same thing as Matt next time. Looks like nice. more fitting to my. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go go to what you're comfortable with. Yeah. yeah. We we really want to figure out how to make it favor everybody. Absolutely. So it's, it's a uh, um, 
it's just a low stress thing where you're, you're performing in your element. You, do you do mostly like alcohol markers and stuff? Yes. If you're Sweet. asking to me. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I always use alcohol based markers. Well, That's almost awesome. always. Or sometimes I use um, watercolors. But nice. You use so, like, alcohol based markers are just so easy to use. I don't know. I, I see like really cool blending and things and I've tried it and I, I haven't figured it out yet. I, I'm excited to keep playing with them. Yeah, I mean, yeah, for I've me, struggled every time. I'm really impressed by what you do. With them. Yeah. For me, it's the only way so that it looks like consistent. Any other technique that I use, it looks kind of like you can see the, the different parts of it. I get that. My alcohol markers are popular at my house. They don't stay. I, yeah, they're not in my office right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they just, they Same here, know. man. My wife loves stealing my markers. Yeah. <laughs> Every yeah, time. I, I have ours. I actually have put them now into these portable like gig bags that hold like 80 of them in each bag. So there's three of them and and I, my request is just just sort the colors back <laughs> back out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely not the primary user of alcohol markers at my house. They are <laughs> everybody likes them. Yeah, they're so fun. And when when you have a good color set, that's when they really become fun. When you have a, an array of colors, so you can create uh, distinct palettes, then they just become this this creative gift. They're yeah, great. I'm. I'm already like I got a new pack a couple months ago. I'm already running out. <laughs> but I get the cheap ones. But <laughs> that's a lifestyle to uh, to really pull in like the Copics in a full, oh man full color. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I make sure to have those for my uh, I like the special black and the black. Um, they're great for for that, but then otherwise, yeah, I go a cheap route for uh, the other markers too. Yeah, I I I I just know if I got the copy ones, I would waste them like so easily. <laughs> it is nice because you can refill the tips and you can refill the ink on most of them. But it's even in the, like if you're just doing your blacks, that's fine. But when you start to go into the colors, the idea of stocking all the refills. Ugh. That's intense mm. to have all, not just the markers, but the refills and things going with it. But uh, it is cool that you can can upkeep those copics. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, I feel so much de-stress already. Just like, this is so therapeutic. <laughs> I swear, I think that uh, drawing and doing this kind of stuff is meditative. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Have you guys ever done a Comic Con where you do commissions at the table, where you're drawing in front of the people coming up to the table? Oh, I, I, I'm, not, I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> it's really this. I'm proud of myself here being able to talk with you all and you're my friends and draw at the same time. <laughs> yeah, same. <laughs> it is intense. Well, unless they're kids, I'm cool with drawing with kids. But you're amazing that you can do that, John. I think that's the only reason I think it's just the practice of doing that. Um, being able to hold a conversation without being able to see the person like looking at them. Yeah. I mean, you look up every once in a while to, you know, so they don't think they're being ignored by you. I mean, you're not, obviously not ignoring them, you're responding to them, but. Uh, are you drawing stuff for them in the moment or are you drawing just your own stuff and they get to watch? Uh, usually it's stuff for them, but fortunately what usually happens is someone wants a commission, they'll ask for it. They'll pay for it, and then they leave. Oh. Fortunately, uh, and usually, <laughs> sometimes 
things. Uh, you'll get them and they'll just sit there. I've had one pull up a chair and sit next to me. And wow. just walk. I'm like, oh my gosh. So I'm like, well, this is going to be a fast commission. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really cool experience. Yeah, they're fun. And I mean, they're relatively uh, cheap to get into. And with you guys' level of talent, if you haven't done any and you're interested, yeah. look up any local ones. And with your guys' as a level of talent, if you just show interest in wanting to be a part of it, depending on the size of, like, not San Diego Comic-Con, they require payment for everything. But depending on your uh, quality level, they'll just want you there because you make the con look good. So if you guys have mm -hmm. interest, check them out. Cool. When this is all over, yeah. <laughs> when we get yeah, Comic Cons yeah. back, <laughs> I'm depressing myself talking about it. Yeah, I know that <laughs> my childhood comic shop uh, is gone. Oh, no. Oh. Yeah. So I, they had moved and changed hands and things, but uh, I know the, the pandemic has, has claimed <sighs> them. I'm sorry to hear that. That sucks. Yeah. Man. That's a lot of memories. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Your guys' stuff looks so good. I'm actually going to, can I spotlight yours for a sec, Matt? Yeah, sure. Okay. Let me stop my share and. I don't know if it's, can, can you start going in light and then I'll go in dark after I figure it out. There we go. I think we're a little blurry, but I've got your. Yeah. I don't know if it helps. There we um, go. Yeah. I think it's just a tissue paper that's making it seem a little more blurry than it is. Yeah. I'm not sure what, I have a weird thing. Is there like a weird screen thing going with mine? Like. There's a little bit of a moray happening. It's having a tough time grabbing and focusing, it looks like. There might be yeah. a, the amount of light or the- I think that, yeah, yeah, it's the level of light probably. I probably need more light in this. Yeah. Um, well, we can we can come back and look at it. I can- Oh yeah, and I will yeah. pull it in as, um, what I'll do as you, you send it to me, I'll pull it in for this section and we'll get to see it up there. Oh, cool, yeah, yeah. Um, Really like in Jinkley's character over here, like those wings, like it's part of like a, <laughs> a structure of wing. Yeah, that's awesome. I don't know. <laughs> I like it. Well, and we're always we're we're all very different, you know. Yeah, that's the quilt. Yeah, I couldn't yeah. have drawn the planet uh, the way you did. Like, I, if I would have tried, I wouldn't have been able to do it. So, yeah, it's just like um, the digital painting, like. You're just having a hard time with it. <laughs> it's tricky if you're not used to it. Yeah, yeah. Using my finger, too. <laughs> that would make it even harder. Yeah, you got to get a, a pen or like a... Yeah, that's true. Like, what are they called? <laughs> Stylist. Do you, what do you guys use? Like a graphic tablet or a digital tablet? I... Mine's a Wacom. Well, Bradley got something real nice recently. <laughs> I did. I was really scared it wasn't going to have t uh, pressure sensitivity. I just got one of the uh, the Huon's um, uh, Canvas uh, 22. So it's a screen that hooks up to your Mac or your PC. But I also have, mm -hmm. a, have a Surface Pro, an older one. And so when I want to draw down in the family room with everybody, um, I, I drag that down there because it's too much work to lug other stuff around. And I, I used yeah. an iPad in the early days and drew on it, but Apple wasn't there yet. They didn't even have the pen yet. And so I bailed on that for the Surface because I could use um, Clip Studio, which is the program that I really like working in. Mm -hmm. And so I try to be unified and just stay in Clip Studio as much as I can. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I've done a little bit with a pat with a tablet, a Wacom tablet and a stylus. And it's pretty fun. It's pretty fun for me. But I, I just guess I like the thrill of of um, ink and watercolor. The danger? You like yeah. the danger? Yeah, just like <laughs> he's a danger. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just fun. I mean, it's like really I don't know. I get it. Like I that's it's the ability to do control Z and remove a mistake I've done is both liberating and it does kind of put you in a confine where doing it traditionally, like you got to do it right. And sometimes mistakes make it better, honestly. So yeah, you're, yeah. Yeah. 
but I, I love to, I love seeing digital art. I don't have any, any kind of, I love it all. Uh, me too. I just enjoy the process more when I, I can use the materials myself. Yeah, the one that I'm using the most, and nowadays it's almost always digital because I'm so much faster, but the one that I'm using the most is the one that I adore and the other one scares me. So right, right now I'm in a cycle of, well, when I work analog, I get nervous and mm -hmm. about making that mistake or, or dealing with it. And I like um, the flexibility of making color options happen with the computer. Um, yeah. Because I just can't get there in any way, shape or form. Uh, uh, drawing on paper, watercolor, and, and markers. Oh, yeah. I want to do more digital, though, all that being said. Yeah, it's... Yeah. Have any of you found yourself working with paper and either, like, in, in looking at, like, say, comics and things or in pinching to Zoom to want to look in closer? Yeah. <laughs> or, or, or actually reaching... I, I, I found myself reaching my hand over to, to control Z. And yeah, I'll, I'll do that. So I'm drawing and I'm, <laughs> I look at the ink pen that I'm holding in my hand and think this isn't going to undo. Yeah. <laughs> That's called you make a mistake and your finger oh. twitches. Your 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 pinky and your ring finger twitch when you make a mistake to a tradition. <laughs> That's called white out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, But sometimes it's fun if you do just sort of leave them, the, having the mistake be part of your, okay, that's there now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And working around it sometimes, yeah. like finding a fix for it in the image. Uh, I think that's just a big part of, of uh, getting things done too, is learning to just roll with the punches and, and uh, yeah. I yeah, you know. <laughs> At some level, everybody that's successful is a little bit of Bob Ross. Because mm -hmm. they just got to have happy accidents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a really impatient person. So when I make mistakes, I just like keep going. And then sometimes I touch it a little bit with Photoshop, like <laughs> mm -hmm. afterwards. But I usually don't even like start a new one. I think we're all the same and that we we just want to get to that finished product we want to get that idea yeah exactly I really wish there were some fill tools uh, to working with Magma Studio, things that would speed it up because I'm really just kind of crayoning it here when you go to color. <laughs> oh, it doesn't have like a, a like balloon select. Dang. No, there's nothing, no yeah. spark area fills or anything. <sighs> um, there's a color fill, but mostly when anybody I've seen uses it, you just get like whole, whole levels <laughs> colored. Oh yeah, the whole background goes. <laughs> Oh, Connor's here. Let's let's admit Connor in. Sweet. All right. Hey, Connor. Hey, uh, I'm just back from work, and all this looks amazing. Oh, right. So, are What's you? Up? Are hey, you Connor. Hi. Magma here. Let's see. Did I see you join? Oh, yeah. I did join the magma. Yeah. Yeah. We'll grab a layer, and uh, if there's room for you, squeeze. There on. should still be some space. Yeah, there's, there's lots of space. Uh, uh, I can erase some of mine if you guys want to, because um. Uh, no, don't erase anything. It's it's already saved, so I don't really mind. <laughs> I really I like to figure out how to get out of Zoom without. There we go. Without removing everything. There we go. And for a scale, we'll probably, because I have some other appointments, but we'll wrap up here in about 10 minutes. Um, I guess a little under 10 minutes, this will end. And, and so uh, I'll catch Connor up a little bit. We've been talking just about the, the aesthetics of um, the, uh, the star breakers and trying to get that uniform look. And uh, uh, we've established kind of uh, the, the shields as an important part of their culture and the use of the shields. Uh oh, Jink Beast is taking it away from us. No, no, oh, save no. it. Oh, undo, control. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and, um, and so 
The only rule is no. He's amazing. making some room. <laughs> yeah. Our big goal here with the draw jam is just to bring in um, uh, some inspiration, some starting points, and. Uh, uh, members and, and others that want to submit things to us at the Indie uh, Comic Union are welcome to, to bring things in. We'll, we'll load uh, drawings that either get started here or happen completely outside of here. We'll load those into the wiki at IndieComicUnion.com. We'll try to post some some collages of these things on the uh, on Instagram, and uh, they'll be the source material that we pull from uh, as inspiration for making the panels for the two three scenes that are gonna have star breakers happening in that first issue. And it'll influence the stories that star breakers occur in uh, beyond this too, as other people take it up and start writing. I haven't, um, I've only quickly uh, skimmed through the the proper script or like the, well, not the actual, like the page by page. Yeah, that, the like overview, the breakdown. Yeah, I can't remember if like Apana stays with the star breakers the whole time since obviously the creator critters must cross paths with her at some point. Yeah, at the end, she shows up at the very end of that first issue, um, again, where with the critters, but there's really three scenes that she's involved in. In that first opening sequence, she's just telling her people to run when the tear happens. And then there's a second scene uh, in which we see her hiding out, kind of trying to ambush and strike back against the bruise black that comes out of that tear. And her people are all broken and, and uh, there's young and elderly that she, you can see she's trying to support. And as she's telling them not yet and wait for it, the bruised black attacks. And we're left with the impression that her tribe is wiped out in that scene. Mm -hmm. So that when we see her in that final scene as the crater critters are about to be wiped out, she comes and rescues them. It's almost like a, a do over for the bad things that happen in the middle of this first issue. So um, I just want to say two words, which is Bruisebarians. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, like Ooh. one thing converted becomes Bruisebarians. I like that. Yeah. That'll be fun. I want to see, uh, I know Robbie was talking like th uh, about things like that yesterday and uh, what happens when they get possessed by that. Uh, that and, uh, oh, Brian man. Judge had some input on that too that we'll, we'll put up. All those things will be exciting to see. That'd be really cool. I'm excited to hear what went on in that other conversation. Yeah, that that turned. I think yeah, I me too. That into two videos, and I'll try to get that out really fast. I think. Oh, it was great. Tomorrow and the next day, we'll get it converted. Yeah, wasn't it a nice time? I was so yeah. relieved and surprised about uh, the response to this and and everyone's enthusiasm. I think we're going to do really nice things with this. Yeah, I do too. Um. This is the fun part, though, isn't it? Yeah, and this is nice. <laughs> the reward too will be that just these draw jams set the stage for the story now, but it's kind of like pre-writing for the future too, because these ideas will um, be in the wiki, and they'll be something that we can draw from later and uh, have show up. All right, I'll do with a few minutes left. I'll go in with a little heavy blacks for the fun of it. <laughs> Here, to amp up the <laughs> with the for the finale yeah <laughs> usually i go usually i um, take a lot longer this is very fast for me yeah i'm trying to scramble through mine too <laughs> so connor I like what, what you're doing there? bradley just sorry i didn't mean to interrupt i just wanted to mention i really like that character you're doing Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah me too. When we were talking mm -hmm. 70s sci-fi in the Discord forum for a little bit, uh, we were showing pictures of Logan's run, and uh, I, w I was thinking about um, uh, the original Battlestar Galactica, and all those things pulled a lot of Egyptian imagery and mm. uh, pyramids and things. Oh, yeah. That was very, I guess, because uh, Tutankhamun happened, right, in the the 70s moving into the 80s so it oh is that why that was that makes sense it visually yeah. <laughs> to people and that was you know sci-fi and fantasy we're just like let's tell a lot of stories with mummies <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so. that's interesting oh jink piece that was a funny we were your your uh, instagram post today uh, yeah <laughs> exactly about, about that well, not exactly <laughs> Newbie has to always be in profile. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that. 
um, yeah, it just makes my work way easier. <laughs> well, it's cool. It's kind of the novelty of the character too. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just like, I just realized I was always drawing her sideways. So, and she's what, what, actually like, Asian, like inspired on Asian, Egyptian gods. So I thought like it was a good excuse to use. <laughs> That's a really good idea. I mean, I don't think I've seen what you posted today. What was the, I'll just go look at it instead of having you explain it to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you think about it, when Gink Beast Land opens, uh, it'll be like the Mickey Mouse ears, where the Mickey Mouse ears always face the same direction. <laughs> That's good, yeah. <laughs> I discovered trying to draw um, uh, Newbie in my uh, Golden Book cover for the Indie uh, team-up. That uh, I thought, well, I'm going to do a you know a full on facial expression, a, um, and, and not in in profile, and mm -hmm. it didn't look right. Everything I did, uh, lifting the nose or or turning anything, it just didn't look like. Uh, like <laughs> yes, I I've been putting people in struggles. <laughs> <laughs> I, so, uh... I, I dug through your stream trying to see if there was anything, and, and uh... <laughs> yeah, no, N not even. <laughs> Yeah, I can I kind of broke uh, broke that on the last on my last one, but she's not even like she's still kind of profile. Mm -hmm. Like you can kind of see the both eyes, but she's wearing sunglasses, so not really. <laughs> <laughs> it could be a different character. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. So it looks like we have about a, a minute or so to wrap up of this, and that's a good good. Uh, we've been going for a little bit. Um, so I'll, I'll do a, a little closer uh, and and say thank you to all of you for joining me. We have uh, uh, Matt from Matt Draws D and D and Jink Beast and John Osborne Art and Connor Cottontail all from Instagram. I'm the Seahorsey. Uh, you can find all of our stuff on Instagram or by going to the IndieComicUnion.com. You'll find members links to all of our um, resources across the web. So, um, and we hope you follow along with more of what we've been working on with the quilt as it progresses. It should be fun. <laughs>